youth change. The youth started to drink. The youth started to disrespect. The kale no mutu be kuba mutu mtaala and kube nama benefits kuto mutu mtaala. Magenge na ufufu kwa. But today those things they no longer happen. Women were women. Abu sis be banga faga ma pro. You wouldn't wear pants as a lady. It was a taboo. You know, umtu mam drive a motor. You know, umama be kuwa umama. You know. But there are good things that came, you know, in the evolution, you know, people becoming free. But sometimes, as they say, when you open your window for the fresh air, the mosquito also comes in. So that's what we experience, and we moved away from certain good things. That's why we normally say, with the joking about it, it was bad, but there's so many things that were good happening, and things that we should have kept. Do you think, Uguti, this behavior of respect was instilled by or so sort of perpetuated by the apartheid government in any way shape or form look the apartheid government also had a hand because the Afrikaners they loved the law Afrikaners and the law you could not separate Afrikaners with the law administration Afrikaners I they were good and I can tell you Afrikaners for every policy that they've designed it achieved exactly what they wanted Mabati Kruperias Act Ugutinje Guma Townships we stubborn. Group areas act. Maba taba tuwa na bashala ni abu sutu bashala ni. Bebenza not sing as well. But unfortunately, some circumstances, you know, they are refused because we shared facilities, you know, because ngale mta bego ne a movie hall, go ne bar ngale, go ne school also dance, go na ma grounds. Tala sort. You cannot play as sutus only. Sit close, you know. Skimel is timid as he one. Since I young in day one call in one high school you find three languages. I want to buy John and I went to young in two. So we could not separate people. Lee Pejel, let's use Pejel, let's see one. In the clinic, one, the song, you know, you know, you know, you know, so stand on a lap and the cells are how, you know, chemistry are built. So, yeah, but apartheid, when uh, they were um, Christians, apartheid uh, government, they believed. Christianity. This country, it was a Christian country. Officially, it was a Christian country. The same way as uh, in Saudi Arabia, they are Muslims. South Africa was a Christian country. Yeah, like every school. Except in Indonesia, our father. In Shia Mahims, you know, Namason, double church, they were big. Namason, double church, double Luther, you know. Namazioni, it was around that. So a culture, you know, yeah, too. Uh, at that time, it was still fresh, and they would, as I said, good. We were still, you know, centered, and there are certain things that were taboo. Like now, uh, people are selling bodies, prostitutes. It's a taboo, you know. Back in the days, my to the prostitute. It was shocking, and right now we hear about a lot of things that are not available. We have a phone about what is not available. You go no monto and bang a motor X5. We have few on phone areas. We were not used to, you know, such things. Tell us then, like, do you think Ogoti had you grown up in today? Who would be the better Ike, the one that grew up in apartheid, such as yourself, or the Ike that would have grown up today? Look, I think I would be better. Growing up now, with the things that uh, I want to say, is the resources, the information accessibility. You know, with the values of yesteryear, but with the information that is available now, I think people now they've got so much going on for them, but they don't see that. You know, but us who were deprived then, and the generations before me, they will thrive in this environment. There was no internet. Nowadays, no matter how bad it is, no matter how horrible things are, you are better off than somebody who was born in the 1300s. If you are born in the 1300s, you could have been a slave. In those days, before my encyclopedia, they were not available. More information. If somebody said a word to you on a new term, you had to find the dictionary. Use a Oxford dictionary, concise dictionary. So right now, you just click your phone. Everything is here. You phone up, and I'm a facilities. I can You can wake up tomorrow. 
being known globally. Maybe you're selling a product, you just posted somebody like uh, the, the, the product and we spread it, it went viral before you even wake up. So nowadays, uh, you're better off than somebody who was born in 1986 because of the information, you know, with the artificial in, in intelligence. intelligence. It's going to change a lot of things. And lots of people, they will struggle. Whenever there's change, people struggle. How many they adapt, how many they die. But, I mean, imagine 50 years or 100 years from now, uh, there will be hobos. There will still be hobos. But there are those people who are going to survive. Imagine if you have a chip somewhere and that technology is perfected. You, you won't have to go to school. You just download information again. And a good computer, you put it, you know, uh, or you just click here. It just jumps into your brain. You know how to drive a, a, a train. You know how to fly a plane. You've got this information. So imagine how interesting it will be. If you need a body part, you can grow your body part. You need a liver transplant. You've got it somewhere. Cloning, you know, all those things will perfect it. Well, there are advantages and disadvantages. But if I lived 100 years uh, later, I'd be very successful, but with the background of yesteryear. But don't because... we sacrifice something? If you live where there's amenities, more amenities and more capabilities, isn't that at the expense of the values? You did just recently say, Ugozi, they moved away. Well, the values are becoming staler and staler by the day. Is that not conjoined to each other? That's life. You always got to sacrifice something. Something will always be sacrificed. Exactly. There's no good without the bad, right? So now with you gaining these amenities, and if you grew up in today's society, do you not feel as though today's values would have somehow ended up clouding your amenities? Because that's what's really killing the youth today. They've got internet, but they're too drunk to use it. They've got university to go to, but... You know, maybe we've got to accept that certain things are not for the masses. You know, you look Lavantaba is on a genius. There's something different, you know. Or there's something different about them. You know, they focus from earlier on. I don't know whether it's because they've got role models, some parents who are guiding them, but they've got this fire go. And they able, you know, to enslave the masses. Because an average man wants soft life. An average man doesn't want to conflict, you know. An average man, if you look watch your favorite team, and then go to work and come back, drink. And there are people who are so advanced. They're always thinking, what, what next? In the next 10 years, the new discovery. What will be trending? And those people, they, they rule the world. And but, you feel you were part of those people, or you would have been part of those people regardless of the era which you grew up in? Look, there are so many people with talent. Some people were passionate. And you also have to take into account the environment, the opportunity. There are some people who told they were passionate, but they didn't have the opportunity. Unfortunately, life is a pyramid. You know, yes, sir, but the most sell up a puzzle. Uh, there are people who've made it, like Abu Zuckerberg, Abu, you know, Elon Musk, yeah, Abu Elon Musk, uh, Tesla. They had opportunity. They they had passion, but if passion you want to also like queen, if you live in a shack, squatter camp, and somebody is living in Sentin, that person from Sentin is hundred years ahead of you, because he's got opportunity and he's got resources to implement, uh, so many things as Fisai. Like for now, uh, Bill Gates is not really a genius. Lots of things as Tabangai. Many uh, other people could have thought of them as well, or probably did think of them. Not even they could have, they did think of them. Abu microchip, Abu whatever, but they don't have means. You just say, ah, let me abandon that. You know, like Abu cell phone, somebody thought of that, because you know what, hey, why can't they make, I used to think about that, but why can't they make a phone on a hamburger and a strategy? Instead, go to you, we will under my messages, and then, but other people with means, they're able to command other people and say, you know what, dude, one, two, three, can you find this? And people come in, they find what you've got means, you finance that. So opportunity now, uh, if it meets, you know, resources, 
It's a success right, explosion. from day one. Yes. Now, did you have any hindrances growing up? Do you feel as though there are some things which you could have thrived in, but you lacked opportunity thanks to you know the apartheid government during that time? Look, for me, like I said, I think I was much more of a better soccer player. Uh, I could play many positions, you know, fluently. And I got injured on uh, my knee, and I think that was something that it killed me. I stopped watching football because each time I watched football, I had that thing which I could do better. You know, I could mark, I could dribble, I could shoot, you know, but I was left footed. You know, the problem with left footed players, they, they rarely use their right, unless they're really cornered, you know. Yeah, left footed players, but they are special. Left footed players are very special. So that's why if you have a kid, he's playing with a left foot, you must just take that kid, put it in a bottle and say, Honestly, yes. talent. Yeah, well, when you play one left, you, you, I see, I can call me to my left. But my problem is, or my question rather is, did the apartheid government or the government then deprive you of any, any Obvious. opportunities? Obviously, because uh, by virtue of they deprive your parents, they've deprived you. You know, us targeting the white class, stealing from whites, mm -hmm. it's because they didn't pay our parents enough. We didn't have the basic things. I struggle with shoes. That's why wherever I am, you know, I'm always looking for good quality shoes because I didn't have shoes, you know. But if my parents were well off, that gap, being a gibber call, 